The Fellowship of Christian Athletes presents Faith in Sports. I'm Chris Schneider. Welcome to the weekly radio show of the largest sports ministry in the world, the FCA. We have two amazing guests for you on the show today. First, we will hear from one of the most beloved coaches in college football history, Lou Holtz. A great coach, a great broadcaster, a great speaker, it goes without saying, one of the greatest motivators of all time. We're all going to have adversity, we're all going to have difficulty, but there's two things to remember. Number one, nothing's as good as it seems and nothing's as bad as it seems, but somewhere in between there, reality falls. When we do have a great disappointment, whether it be in athletics or whether it be in life, for example, when our house burnt down, you know, you're devastated about everything you lost. You think of all the difficulties you're going to have in rebuilding it and all the various permits you have to go through by the government before you can even wipe it out and then start over again. But we gave ourselves when it was 2.30 in the morning at fire was put out about 4.30. I said to my wife, and she's crying at the time. I said, we're going to feel sorry for ourselves till 12 o'clock Monday at noon. After that, we're never going to think about this again. We're not going to worry about it. We're going to go look forward. More from Coach Holtz coming right up. Another NFL season is at hand. Teams open training camps all around the country in the next few days. New Orleans Saints quarterback Drew Brees will provide us with this week's classic moment. It was at that moment I remember our pastor um, talking about God looking for a few good men, and they reference the movie, A Few Good Men, uh, but they said, God is out there and he's looking for a few good men. And all of a sudden the light bulb went off in my head and I was just like, hey, that's me. I can be one of those few good men. For the first time I felt like God was really talking to me and speaking to me. and um, So that was that was the day. More from Saints quarterback Drew Brees with the classic moment later this half hour. Also joining us on the show today, former NFL player Wade Hopkins. He is now a regional vice president with the FCA, serving Texas, Oklahoma, and Arkansas. Wade will tell us how he came to know Jesus through FCA in college. So if the line doesn't block, quarterback can't throw. And if the quarterback can't throw, I can't do my job. And that's when they really taught me from a sports perspective, used vernacular that I could relate to. We're a team, and I can be a light in the locker room. And I knew a bunch of my teammates who weren't going to church. Billy Graham was never going to step into my locker room, not because he wouldn't want to, just probably would never be invited. And so I could be the hands and feet of Christ as a teammate in the locker room, and God had a purpose for my life. And that just... That just captured me. I realized I am important. I may never get my name in the paper like the quarterback, like the pastor, Billy Graham, but I can be someone on the front lines like the lineman who you never hear about until they have a holding penalty or something. (laughs) But I might be a spiritual lineman, and I'm going to do the best I can to work for the Lord. Uh, to be his hands and feet and to all those he might bring across my path. More from former NFL player, now FCA servant Wade Hopkins, coming up in just a few minutes. FCA asks you, are you ready to step up? We are ready to equip and support you. Faith plus sport equals FCA. God is doing amazing things every day through thousands of people on teams, in schools, and in communities worldwide. Learn more at fca.org. Let's go do what only you can do. Now, I am honored to introduce our special guest today, Lewis Holtz. You probably know him as Lou. Coach Holtz is in the College Football Hall of Fame. He led Notre Dame to a national championship. He's the only college football coach to lead six different programs to bowl games and the only coach to lead four different programs to a final top 20 ranking. He also coached in the NFL and was a very popular analyst on TV for several years. Coach Holtz does a lot of speaking all around the country. Hey, Coach, thank you so much for joining us here on FCA's Faith in Sports today. You keep yourself pretty busy, don't you? Yeah, well, I've been everywhere except to bed, and I've spoken to everybody except my wife. Somebody said, do you ever go anywhere where people don't recognize you? I said, yeah, when I go home. I'm just involved in an awful lot of charity work, uh, various speeches for corporations, uh, trying to be a husband, trying to be a father, trying to be a grandfather. But uh, it just seems that I stay busy. 
never slows down, does it? Well, particularly when our house burned down on June 22nd and burned to the ground. Uh, we lost everything. 2.30 in the morning, I was awakened by the smoke alarm. I wakened my wife. We got out of the house. And, but we didn't lose anything we could take to heaven. The only thing you can take with you to heaven are your children. And uh, so we're in the process of rebuilding it. That's not really what you want to do when you're 79 years of age. My wife is 78. But then again, uh, this is what you have to do when, you know, we're going to try to make it better than what we lost. Amen. That's a good philosophy in life, too. When I was uh, studying for our interview, the the thing that surprised me most probably was that you played linebacker in college. You, you don't seem big enough to be able to play linebacker. Well, I, I, I was a little bit heavier then. I was about 160 pounds in college. But let's remember this. When I played uh, in high school, they didn't even wear face masks. So that tells you how long ago it was. And a guard then would weigh 180, 185 pounds. A tackle, if he's real big, would weigh 200. So when you're 160 pounds, you're being outweighed by maybe 20 pounds. That'd be very comparable to an individual playing linebacker 220 pounds today. So everything is really relative. But uh, it also was in the uh, single platoon gay days, and so you had to learn to play both. But I wasn't a great football player. I remember when Tim Brown won the Heisman. I went to New York to be with Tim Brown in the event. He did not win it. I didn't need to be there if he won it. It was televised, I think, on CBS, and Jim Dance was doing the interview, and he said, we have a little bit of extra time. Coach, you mind if I interview you? I said, no. And he said, do you ever dream about winning the Heisman when you played in college? And obviously, he hadn't done his old work. I said, oh, yeah, yet. I wanted to win the Heisman for three reasons. Number one, I've been the first player from Kent State in Ohio to ever win it. I've been the first defensive player to ever win it. And I've been the first third teamer to ever win it. The interview ended very abruptly after that, but that was basically the highlight of my playing days. We're talking with one of the best college football coaches of all time. More with Lou Holtz coming up in a few minutes. And later in the show, we'll get the FCA Classic moment from Saints future Hall of Fame quarterback Drew Brees. This is the Fellowship of Christian Athletes weekly radio show, Faith in Sports. In 1966, Coach Tom Landry had the inspiration to start the Fellowship of Christian Athletes in Dallas. This year, Dallas-Fort Worth FCA is celebrating God's amazing impact on coaches and athletes during our 50th anniversary. Over 16,000 students and athletes are involved with FCA in North Texas. Nearly 500 coaches and teachers volunteer their time to influence student athletes. Visit dfwfca.org for more information, including how you can pick up some one-of-a-kind 50th anniversary products like caps, shirts, coffee mugs, and more. You want to play some golf with some of the greatest Texas Rangers of all time? Pudge, Grieve, and Macklemore? You're cordially invited to the DFWFCA Jim Sunberg Golf Classic, October 3rd. Sounds like a lot of fun, Sonny. Yeah, we're going to do something a little different this year. Instead of having really a main speaker, we're going to just do a q and I'm actually going to be the, the moderator for q and with those guys. And they're names that are familiar to the baseball world here in North Texas. Go to dfwfca.org for information and registration. I tell students if they can sweat, they can be a part of FCA and everybody can sweat, so all are welcome. FCA has taught me how to lead. It's taught me how to be a leader. It's taught me how to present myself and how to live a life full of character both on and off the field. I can't think of any other scenario where you can see people from such diverse backgrounds able to connect in a way that We can connect at FCA. Being around other kids who also love God the same, because you get to see, wow, they love God too, and they've been through what I've been through, so wow, I can relate to that. FCA teaches you to put Christ and others before yourself. Just to know that, yeah, you can be an athlete and that can be what you do, but that's not your identity. As you can see, it just greatly impacted me personally and spiritually and um, will always be part of my story. 
If you are or would like to be an FCA Huddle Coach or sponsor, join us Sunday, August 14th for a free FCA North Texas Huddle Coach Sponsor Inspo Training Event. Former Dallas Cowboy Chad Hennings will be speaking, along with Carolyn Allen, the wife of Highland Park Coach Randy Allen. Go to dfwfca.org for information. I'm Chris Schneider. Welcome back to the weekly radio show of the largest sports ministry in the world, the Fellowship of Christian Athletes, FCA's Faith in Sports. We will continue our conversation with the great Lou Holtz in just a minute. New Orleans Saints quarterback Drew Brees will bring us the FCA Classic Moment of the Week. We will also hear from former NFL player, now FCA Regional Vice President Wade Hopkins. Do you get tired of hearing all the bad news? We'll get some good news. Subscribe to FCA Magazine to read interviews with some of the greatest coaches and athletes in the world, people like Stephon Curry and UCLA coach Steve Alford. Subscribe to FCA Magazine today at fca.org. Now, our special guest here on Faith in Sports today is College Football Hall of Famer Lou Holtz. So, Lou, you won a national championship at Notre Dame. Do you consider that the highlight of your coaching career? Well, I felt we could have won two or three other ones, uh, you know, but sometimes when you signed the NBC contract at Notre Dame, there was a backlash. Up until that time, Notre Dame got the favorite in the voting. I remember in 77, I was at the University of Arkansas. We finished second. Uh, well, we, we, we ended up 12 and 1, beat Oklahoma at that time was number one, 31 to 6. And Notre Dame jumped over us and Alabama when they beat Texas to win the national championship. But I don't really look back and say, hey, this was the greatest single thing. I, I, we've had some great years. Uh, at Arkansas, probably the Orange Bowl where we upset Oklahoma after suspending three athletes. And, Scored 78% of our touchdowns, became the largest underdog there's ever been in the major bowl. You know, there, there are a lot of highlights, but the thing I'm probably most proud of, I've taken over six college situations. I never inherited a winner, but never failed to go to a bowl game by the second year at the latest. And we just had a philosophy of how you would turn a program around. I think it's uh, you got to change your attitude. you got to build them fundamentally, uh, make sure they can block and tackle better, and, and then build their confidence and believe in them and uh, have a purpose of what you're trying to accomplish. When you give people a goal and get them to believe that they can achieve that goal as a team and as individuals, then they become a highly motivated team. So as you mentioned, you took these six different programs and turned them around, made them successes. So when you're giving advice, and I know you do all the time because you speak everywhere, when you're giving people life advice, how to overcome adversity, you know, how to turn their lives around, what do you say to them? Well, the first thing that uh, we have to understand that life is a better make a good choice. Wherever you are, good or bad, or because of choices you make. If you choose to do drugs, drop out of school, join a gang, get tattoos from head to bottom, you're probably choosing to have difficulties in life. And don't blame me for those choices you make. We're all going to have adversity. We're all going to have difficulty. But there's two things to remember. Number one, nothing's as good as it seems and nothing's as bad as it seems. But somewhere in between there, reality falls. When we do have a great disappointment, whether it be in athletics or whether it be in life, for example, when our house burnt down, you know, you're devastated about everything you lost. You think of all the difficulties you're going to have in rebuilding and all the various permits you have to go through by the government before you can even wipe it out and then start over again. But we gave ourselves when it was 2.30 in the morning at fire was put out about 4.30. I said to my wife, and she's crying at the time, I said, we're going to feel sorry for ourselves at 12 o'clock Monday at noon. After that, we're never going to think about this again. We're not going to worry about it. We're going to go look forward. So when you have a disappointment, I get myself 24 hours or so to feel sorry for myself. But from that time on, we're going to move forward. So let's just make good choices and understand that there's going to be difficulty in life and you're going to have problems. And don't tell people about your problems. 
Ninety percent of people don't care about your problems, and the other ten percent, you're glad you got them. So <laughs> the main thing is just uh, be persistent, move on, and don't evaluate your life until it's over. Don't get there and say, "I've done this or done that." If what you did yesterday looks a big deal, you haven't done much today. And I think the most important thing I've learned in life is uh, you're either growing or you're dying. So's a tree, so's a grass, so's a marriage, so's a business, so's a person. It doesn't have a thing to do with age, but it's everything to do. Are you trying to accomplish something? What happens? We get very successful in life. We think, well, let's just maintain where we are. Let's not try to, uh, let, let's not take any risks. Let's not take any chances. Let's just maintain where we are because we have a good thing going. But when you do that, you have no enthusiasm. You never come up with a new idea or new excitement. So when we talk about adversity, difficulty, it's all part of life. You can see why he was such a great coach. Gets you kind of fired up, huh? Ready to go go to work. Lou Holtz, thank you for joining us here on Faith in Sports. Coming up next, we'll hear from former NFL receiver, now FCA Vice President Wade Hopkins, and none other than Saints quarterback Drew Brees will bring us the FCA Classic Moment of the Week. This is the Fellowship of Christian Athletes weekly radio show, Faith in Sports. Situated on 330 acres of beautiful natural landscape with facilities to accommodate groups up to 1,000, Lakeview Camp and Retreat Center is the ideal place to schedule your next event. Whatever your group's goals are, Lakeview aims to meet your needs, providing year-round service facilities for retreats, conferences, camps, corporate meetings, outdoor education outings, school events, and family gatherings. Our friendly staff is committed to making your stay a great experience. Come to Lakeview Camp and Retreat Center and enjoy state-of-the-art facilities, activities that engage and rejuvenate, comfortable lodging, and great food in a setting that inspires the awe of the greatness of God. To learn more about this scenic location for your next event, visit us online today. For more information, visit lakeviewcamp.net. At FCA, we're touching millions one heart at a time. Since 1954, the Fellowship of Christian Athletes has been putting the heart and soul in sports by challenging athletes and coaches to impact the world for Jesus Christ. As the largest sports ministry in the world, FCA now reaches over 2 million people annually on the professional, college, high school, junior high, and youth levels. Through this shared passion for athletics and faith, lives are changed one heart at a time. Learn more at fca.org. We would be honored to have you partner with us at DFWFCA as we continue to touch thousands and thousands of lives for Christ. Just as Tom Landry envisioned when he started the DFWFCA 50 years ago. To see how you can donate or volunteer to join us, go to dfwfca.org. And it's always easy to connect with us. Find us on Facebook at DFWFCA and on Twitter at FCA DFW. How would you like to have lunch with Texas Rangers great Jim Sundberg, Pudge Rodriguez, Tom Grieve, and Mark McLemore? Well, you can do exactly that by joining us for the Jim Sundberg Golf Classic Monday, October 3rd at the Trophy Club Country Club. The driving range will be open at 9. Lunch will be served at 11 with Jim Sundberg talking with his panel of fellow Ranger greats, Pudge, Grieve, and McLemore. Then we'll hit the golf course. There will be great raffle prizes and live auction items along with food, fun, and entertainment. For all the details on the DFW FCA Jim Sundberg Golf Classic, go to dfwfca.org. Welcome back to the Fellowship of Christian Athletes weekly radio show, Faith in Sports. I'm Chris Schneider. New Orleans Saints quarterback Drew Brees will join us with this week's classic moment in just a couple of minutes. Joining us here on Faith in Sports now, though, is a man I caught up with at a recent FCA summer camp where over 100 high school student-athletes made commitments to Christ. Wade Hopkins is a former NFL player who is now an FCA regional vice president serving Texas, Oklahoma, and Arkansas. Wade, thank you for joining us here on Faith in Sports. So tell us your story. How did you come to know Christ and then become involved with the Fellowship of Christian Athletes? Growing up in Houston, Texas, my parents divorced when I was young, and the only thing I can ever remember is a dream to play in the NFL. So you got to go to college. 
you know, some people can go straight to the NF- to the NBA from high school. And I've even recently learned that a lot of track runners don't even go to high school. They get sponsored and go straight to the Olympics or whatever. But in football, you got to go to school. So I uh, blow my knee out first game my senior year and go to Southwest Baptist University because that's the only school that will offer me a scholarship. Don't know what Baptist was, didn't really care, just wanted to play football. And uh, Jim Hall, my head football coach, and the culture of that college just transformed my life. But he invited me to, to FCA. Is that where you were introduced to Christ? Absolutely. Growing up in Houston, Texas, never heard the name of Christ. I realize now, looking back, and I've you know, been with FCA 20 years, and most of those years right there in Houston, I've met so many of my high school classmates, teammates that were believers in high school, and even challenged them a little bit. You know, I, I didn't know the Lord, and you could ask me. I mean, and not in a way that would embarrass them or hurt them, but you missed out on a tremendous blessing. You know, to obviously God was at work in my life and wanted me to come to know Him, and He could have used you to do it. Rodney Gilmore was one of the guys at college that uh, the Lord really helped grow me and taught me how to pray and stuff. And and he called. Every time we talk, he cries like a baby. I can't believe what God's doing in your life. And I had a part of it. And so we just miss out as believers when we don't get to be a part of someone's testimony. What was it about the FCA message that got through to your heart? I remember uh, sitting in a huddle meeting and people had said, God has a plan for your life. And people had told me that God loved me. And, you know, growing up, I was a good kid. You know, my parents divorced when I was young and my my dad moved to Scotland, hadn't seen him in 35 years. And so, yes, ma'am, no, ma'am, no pass, no play. I made straight A's. I mean, I I wanted to play ball. Didn't, I know you couldn't play if you were in jail or get kicked out of school. So, I mean, didn't do anything wrong. I mean, I was just a good kid. So if God loves, he loves me. That's just what I always realized. And so I'm sitting in FCA and they say, God has a plan for your life. And I just come to Christ. And I said, what do you mean God has a plan for my life? I'm not going to be a pastor. or t- I'm not going to be Billy Graham. And, and they said, no, no, no. On a football team, if the line doesn't block, can the quarterback throw? I played wide receiver. <laughs> I knew firsthand <laughs> that if the quarterback got sacked, that messed my chance of catching the ball. And back then, we didn't throw the ball 50 times a game like they do now. We only threw you know, 15, 20 times, and I'm only going to get five or six chances, and I want to catch every one. And so I just remember vividly thinking, gosh, when I'm open and I look back to the quarterback and the defensive tackle's doing a dance over my quarterback, oh, goodness gracious. You know, I, was, I wasn't a yeller or a screamer, but I go, just a block, you know. <laughs> so if the line doesn't block, quarterback can't throw. And if the quarterback can't throw, I can't do my job. And that's when they really taught me from a sports perspective, used vernacular that I could relate to, we're a team, and I can be a light in the locker room. And I knew a bunch of my teammates who weren't going to church. Billy Graham was never going to step into my locker room, not because he wouldn't want to, just probably would never be invited. And so I could be the hands and feet of Christ as a teammate in the locker room, and God had a purpose for my life. And that just, that just captured me. I realized I am important. I may never get my name in the paper like the quarterback, like the pastor, or Billy Graham, but I can be someone on the front lines like the lineman who you never hear about until they have a holding penalty or something. <laughs> but I might be a spiritual lineman, and I'm going to do the best I can to work for the Lord, uh, to be his hands and feet, and to all those he might bring across my path. That is Wade Hopkins, FCA Regional Vice President, serving Texas, Oklahoma, and Arkansas. Thank you, sir. The Fellowship of Christian Athletes is touching millions of lives all around the world. FCA has nearly 13,000 certified huddles in 47 countries. Go to fca.org to find out how you can get involved with us. We'd love to have you on our team. It's time for this week's FCA Classic Moment, provided by a certain future Hall of Famer. He grew up in Texas, he went to Purdue, and is now the main man in New Orleans. Saints quarterback Drew Brees, who tells us the story of how he came to be saved. You know, um, I I first really accepted Jesus Christ in my heart uh, on my 17th birthday, um, January 15th. (laughs) Um, I was actually in church. It was a Sunday in church. And before that, you know, I had gone to church with my, my family and, um, but I was just kind of there, you know, listen to the stories and, you know, it all sounded good, but I didn't, didn't fully, truly understand it, get it or accept it. And it was at that moment, I remember our pastor, um, talking about God looking for a few good men and they referenced the movie, a few good men, uh, but they said, God is out there and he's looking for a few good men. And all of a sudden, the light bulb went off in my head, and I was just like, hey, that's me. 
I can be one of those few good men. For the first time, I felt like God was really talking to me and speaking to me. And, um, so that was, that was the day. Drew Brees with this week's FCA Classic Moment. Thank you, sir. Coming up next, we'll tell you who the special guest is going to be joining us on the show next week and who will provide next week's Classic Moment. This is Faith in Sports, the weekly radio show of the largest sports ministry in the world, the Fellowship of Christian Athletes, FCA. The DFW FCA offers you a chance to have dinner with four of the greatest Dallas Cowboys of all time. Roger Staubach, Dan Reeves, Bob Lilly, and Bob Brunig headline the DFW FCA's 50th anniversary celebration dinner at the Irving Convention Center. You can get early bird pricing now and tickets will go fast. The DFW Fellowship of Christian Athletes continues to touch thousands of lives for Christ and you can be an important part of it. Join us for a night of great food, stories, testimonies, and fellowship. For information and early bird pricing, go to dfwfca.org. Is God calling you to serve alongside a middle school or high school coach in your hometown? DFWFCA is excited to announce our Character Coaching Initiative. Training for those interested is August 22nd. Go to dfwfca.org for all the info. Did you know that after a trip to an FCA sports camp in Estes Park, Colorado in 1962, Dallas Cowboys coach Tom Landry felt inspired to use his position as a coach to influence young student athletes. So in 1966, 50 years ago, Coach Landry helped launch the Fellowship of Christian Athletes in Dallas. Hi, I'm Rick Bowles, North Texas Director for the Fellowship of Christian Athletes, and I'd like to ask you to tell us your FCA story. What impact did FCA have or is currently having on your life? Visit dfwfca.org for more information. You are invited to the JSGC, the Jim Sunberg Golf Classic, with special guests Pudge Rodriguez, Tom Grieve, and Mark McLemore. Can you really play golf, Sonny? I like playing golf. I am, <laughs> uh, I would say, humbly, uh, not too bad. Uh, I shoot in the upper I shoot in the upper 70s, and I don't have to shoot in the 70s to have fun. I can shoot 85 and 88 and, and have a good time. That's what I try to do. I have a good time. Keep it in the middle, Chris, and, and I, <laughs> I can get to the green. I'll let somebody else putt. Go to dfwfca.org for registration and details. Kansas City Royals pitcher Brian Bannister. One of the great things about FCA for me in high school was just the fact that we got God on campus. Just the ability to uh, not only associate it with sports, just, but just to uh, get people into the classroom and, and to share God's word. We started it on campus uh, my sophomore year, and by our senior year it had grown exponentially. It was one of the few opportunities we got on a regular basis to share God's word with our student body. The Fellowship of Christian Athletes at fca.org. I'm Chris Schneider. Thank you for joining us for the Fellowship of Christian Athletes Faith in Sports radio show. To learn more about FCA, just go to fca.org. Our thanks to our special guests today, the great Lou Holtz and the great Drew Brees. I'm Chris Schneider, the sports and spirit speaker. You can find me at RadioactiveSpeaking.com. Godly messages with stories from the greatest coaches and athletes of all time. Find me, the sports and spirit speaker, at RadioactiveSpeaking.com. Now, the golf year has been going fast. All four majors in the books, and they'll have golf at the Olympics this summer. So we will have a couple of Christian PGA players joining us on the show next week. Former PGA Rookie of the Year, Jonathan Bird, and five-time PGA Tournament winner, Mark Wilson. The classic moment next week will be provided by Texas Ranger Hall of Famer, Jim Sunberg. Guests scheduled to join us in future weeks include Roger Staubach, Dan Reeves, Bob Lilly, Mike Singletary, Tom Osborne, Clayton Kershaw, and many others. FCA's Faith in Sports is an outreach of DFW Fellowship of Christian Athletes, hosted and produced by me, Chris Schneider. Executive producer is Rick Bowles. For information on DFW FCA, contact Rick at rbowles, that's R-B-O-W-L-E-S, at fca.org. And remember this week to do all that you do under the Lord Jesus Christ. God bless you. From the DFW Fellowship of Christian Athletes, Faith in Sports.